Hello and welcome to this Python video on maze solving. Uh, this is using the left hand rule algorithm and as you can see the sprite is navigating the maze always sticking to the left hand wall. Now as algorithms go this is not particularly efficient but it is effective. It's always guaranteed to find the exit. And that's true in real life really. If you ever in the unfortunate circumstances of being stuck in a maze, if you put your hand on the left hand wall and just walk around the maze, always keeping the wall to your left, you will eventually find the exit. So what is the left hand rule algorithm? So let me explain before I show you the Python code by use of this uh, PowerPoint presentation I have. So here I have the algorithm on the left hand side and I've got a little maze that I'll put together and the sprite, the goal of this sprite is to maneuver himself around the maze till he gets to the green square but by using this algorithm. So we start and the first question it asks, have I reached the end? Well clearly I haven't, I've only just started, this is the end. Is there a wall to the left? Well the sprite is pointing down so that's his left hand wall. So yes there is a wall to my left, is the cell in front free or available? Yep this cell here is it available so therefore he can move forward one cell which he does back around the maze again have I reached the end no I haven't is there a wall to my left yep there's a wall to my left is the cell in front free yes the cell in front is free so I can move forward and it will carry on like that until it gets to this position back around the algorithm again uh, have I reached the end no I haven't is the wall to my left free? Well, no, it's not free anymore. There is uh, the path is there. There's no wall, so it uses this branch of the algorithm, and it rotates counterclockwise or left. So it turns left and it moves forward one cell. Turn left, move forward one cell. Back round the algorithm again. Have I reached the end? No. Is there a wall to my left? Well, yes, there's a wall to my left, and the cell in front is free, so I'm allowed to move one more cell. Back round the loop again. Have I reached the end? No. Is there a wall to my left? Well, no, there isn't a wall to my left now. So I use the branch here, which rotates counterclockwise or left, and I move forward one cell. And I carry on until I get to this position. Once again, have I reached the end? No, the end is here. Is there a wall to my left? Well, yes, there is a wall to my left this time. No problem. Is the cell in front free? No, the cell in front is not free, it's a wall. So I rotate clockwise or right. So the sprite turns right. Back round the loop again. Have I reached the end? No. Is there a wall to my left? Yes, there's a wall to my left. Is the cell in front free? No, it's not. So I rotate clockwise one more time. Back round the loop again. Reach the end? No. Is the wall to my left free? Yes, it is. Is the cell in front free? So is this is there a wall to my left? Yes, there is. Is the cell in front free? Yes, and I can move forward, and it will carry on like that, moving itself around the left-hand wall until it gets to this position, and finally, have I reached the end? Yes, and the ter program terminates. So that's the left-hand rule algorithm. Right. So before I start going through the Python program, I just want to lay down a caveat or two. Um, First of all, I'm not a professional programmer. I don't do this for a living. Um, I have done some programming in the past, but it was many years ago. And this is my first real exposure to Python. I have done a few Python programs using the Raspberry Pi, but nothing um, on this level. Um, so for all you professional Python programmers out there, please don't get annoyed if I don't follow convention or that my code isn't as elegant or as efficient as you could make it. Um, to me, it's not about having elegant code or efficient code, it's about readability. So if I'm using 20 lines when you could do it in 10, please don't get annoyed or upset with me. Okay, that being said, let me go through what I have written. Uh, I've imported three libraries. Um, the first one is the Turtle Library, and as you probably noticed from the animation at the beginning of this video, I'm using Win uh, Python Turtle Graphics. Um, I've imported time because it's quite useful to slow the animation down when you're doing debugging to find out exactly what the turtle is doing. And the in system library, I've imported that because there's a couple of functions that do require this uh, library. These three bits of code here are setting up the screen, the turtle screen. So um, I've set it up 
uh, it's a black background and the dimensions are 1300 wide by 700 in depth. Now for each of the uh, turtle graphics I've created a, a class. So the maze is made up of a number of turtle or a turtle stamped on the screen um, to build the walls and I'll come on to that in a few minutes. So this class really just consists of a the shape of the turtle which is square and the colour. Uh, I've brought the pen up because I don't want it to leave a trail behind and I've set the speed to be the fastest possible speed which is zero. <clears throat> The end square on the uh, maze is also uh, a turtle graphic, uh, exactly the same as the maze, but this time instead of being white it's green, just identifies itself as a green square on the maze. And the last class I set up is for the sprite itself, this is a sprite that will manoeuvre itself around the maze. Um, so I've given it a shape as a turtle because it's quite nice to be able to see in which direction that the graphic is moving in. I've given it a colour red and I give it a starting position of 270 which is 270 degrees which is pointing down. Uh, once again a pen up and speed set to zero. I have four methods inside the class. The first one is called sprite down, sprite left, sprite up and sprite right. I'll come back to them in a few minutes. Let me just explain how the um, maze is constructed. So this great maze is constructed uh, using have a, a list here called uh, grid and the maze is constructed by using a number of ASCII characters in a number of rows. I think there's something like 20 rows there, 15, 20 rows and each row consists of a, a number of characters. So the, the first row has a number of crosses which will represent the walls of the maze. Um, S will represent the sprite and where you don't see anything, space, that's part of the path. So it's quite easy to construct your own maze which by using some simple text graphics. Or if you want, you can uh, go to Google and do a search for ASCII mazes and there's hundreds if not thousands of mazes that you can download or modify uh, and import. So I now have a function called setup maze. So it calls in the grid and it has a couple of for loops. The very first for loop calls in the very, very first line or a line of, 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 of uh, the grid. So let's say it assumes it's calling the very first line here. So it's got the first line in there. The second for loop examines every single character that's inside uh, of that row. And it, sign, it signs a, uh, a grid reference to a variable called character. And now I've got two more screen variables, two more variables called one called screen X and one called screen Y, and they've got this, these unusual values of minus five five eight and two eight eight. So what are these values here? Well, if I just go back to my PowerPoint presentation, you can see this is the uh, total screen, and it's a coordinate-based system. So the very very centre of the screen is zero zero. So basically anything that's to the left on the x-axis and above zero is a negative number anything to the right is a positive number same way with the y-axis anything that's above zero is a positive number anything below is a negative number so if I just zoom in a bit make this a bit clearer for you so on the x-axis which is this one here the starting position is minus 588 on the x-axis and on the y-axis it's 288 and each cell is 24 pixels apart so um, minus 558 for the first cell, minus 564 for the second, minus 540 for the third and the same on the y-axis 288, 264 and 240. So that's where these um, unusual numbers come from. So they're basically they're going to be the um, coordinates of the of the turtle window. So we now move down to here so it's got a character in its memory so let's say the character is a plus sign so it satisfies this command here um, it will then go to the class maze now if you remember the class maze is a turtle uh, white square it will go to the screen coordinates that have been given here and it will stamp a copy of itself so it will stamp a white square on a screen at them locations it will then append these these two uh, coordinates into a list called walls. I've got some two lists set up here, one called walls, one called finished. 
and then pass around the loop. If it sees it's a, another plus, then it will uh, put another stamp on the on the maze and so on. If it sees an E, that means it's an end position. So it will stamp a copy of the end class, which you remember is a green square turtle. And instead of uh, appending it in the walls list, it pens it into the finish list. If it sees a character as an S, then it knows it's the sprite and the sprite will go to the screen location that's been given. That's how this, the sprite maneuvers around the screen. Now let me just take you down to the, the main loop, program loop. This is the program that loops around. So there's four functions or methods. Um, one is called sprite right, sprite down, sprite left and sprite up. Now the first method uh, or the first call is to, for it to go to sprite right. So if I go to sprite right, the very first line of code it says if its heading is 180 degrees then run this code here well it's not 180 degrees if you remember uh, the sprite is facing down which is 270 degrees so this part of the code will get ignored and will drop down to sprite down so if we go to sprite down which is here first line is its heading 270 degrees yes it is so this rest of the code will get run so what it does, it checks the current position of the sprites by using x, x and y coordinates and puts them into uh, the x, and wall, x walls and y walls. And if x walls and y walls is uh, in the finished list, that means the uh, it's reached its end goal and it will terminate the program. If it's not, it will check the um, walls x and walls y position to see if there is a wall on the left. If there is a wall on the left, we'll then pass control down to this line here which will check to see if there's a path ahead is clear and you remember the algorithm if there was a wall to the left and there was path was clear we could move forward so if them two lines are satisfied then we can move forward if this if statement here is not satisfied then it means that the uh, sprite has got itself into a, a dead end and it needs to turn right as per the algorithm we went through in this part here if uh, it, it's in walls, if it's not in walls, there's no wall to the left, that means it has to turn left and then move forward 24 pixels or one cell as per the algorithm. Now the left function, the up function and the right function are all identical except for the, the uh, first line to check its heading and the east line here to check the, this line here to check the coordinates. That's the only thing that's different. So that's really about it, really. That's the whole code of the program. What I'll do, I'll put this on GitHub if you want to have a little play around with it. Um, download it yourself, play around with it, change it, whatever you want. All that remains for me to do now is to run the program again. You see the maze now building up. The green spot is the uh, end position, which position itself down here somewhere. And you can see now the sprite is moving around the ways, always following the left hand position, left hand wall. Now, as I said, this uh, algorithm is not very efficient. There are more efficient algorithms. There's one called um, Brett First Search, which I might look at. And there is a uh, another one called Recursive Backtracking, which I might have a look at as well. And if I get the time, the inclination, I'll we'll put them on YouTube as well. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.